to EMEA Masters 2023 Summer Quarterfinals, where Wildcats have their backs literally up against a blue wall. Kamikov leading the series <laughs> 2 and 0. Guys, what a stomp! Yes. What a stomp it is. <laughs> yeah, it's like started off nice, a little cheeky kill in the mid lane. Maybe yeah. Sujuani and Nico can get going. <laughs> yeah. And then Drake fights, Sak and Zari banned all yeah. game, just uh, cleans up with a broom. Yeah, it does feel a little bit like bullying, though, right? You give them that little bit to give them false hope, and then you're like, no, get back. You're Support going who? right in the toilet. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it does feel like it's a little bit of a staircase, the victory there for Carmen <laughs> Corp. Or I don't know. It's just Wildcats, they're just falling apart everywhere. 100%. I don't Crazy know, man. Mess. That doesn't look like support to me. I don't know. He might be yeah. playing the position, but that damage speaks miles. Now, of course, you said Yamato that it did start with that cheeky kill in the middle, and that's what you expected from the draft as well. You said you have, they have the Nico, they have the Setsuani. They've got more than enough CC tools to do something in the early and snowball it. How did he go after that one? It, it was just everything slowed down. I think the key thing, right, is like you blind pick the Alistar, you invite this bot lane that is, of course, uh, the Nyla and the Senna. Well, invite is kind of a tough word because it implies, you know, it's coming. Uh, this is, of course, very unique. I think we've only seen G2 play it uh, globally, as far as I know. And uh, I think if you don't manage to punish it, things are not going to go well. But Paros finds the engage. But the key thing here is just sucking on the Ari. Something that's been banned so, so much manages to get the reset, weaves in the alt attacks with the red buff. And all of a sudden, this composition that is so AP heavy and also is getting outscaled on the bottom side, falling behind with it is super, super tough. And Keiko just never seemed to let go. And uh, the Wildcats as well uh, didn't really uh, exercise any form of this Discipline, they didn't really look for any right opportunities either because K-Corp just, k I don't know what that is, <laughs> K-Corp just uh, stayed uh, compact and just uh, team fought together with the Scion from top lane. Yeah, and it made it very, very difficult for Wildcats to kind of do anything. I love the fact that the Senna as well, like the, the mist, the Shroud, was so impactful at team fights. We saw that dragon fight where you end up going for this big Nico engage. It looks fantastic, but Shroud's down, Nico dies, and no one's actually in the vicinity to spot out the the, the, the double threat that you have coming through from the bot side. Also then as well, you could see that when the Nico had kind of thrown everything in the kitchen sink, a lot of that was going into the front line. And then you're kind of going, okay, well now we're reliant on this area. So we we'll put massively far behind. Whereas you actually got like two and a half damage dealers essentially between the Senna, the Ari, and also the AD carry then in the Nita. So across the board, it just felt very, very difficult for Wildcats to get up and rolling once they started to fall behind in that early stage. And honestly, we came into this series with a, a little bit of a question mark when it comes to Targamas as well. We said we have seen him perform at his best standards, but now he's coming into this tournament a little bit shaky. Common Cup themselves are coming into this tournament shaky, barely making it into quarterfinals. But right here, they seem to have their foot down uh, the gas. And honestly, I'd love to highlight that man down in the bot lane because he did the carrying this time quite literally with Damage as well. We have a very beautiful highlight reel uh, of Targamas and how he played the fights as well. It was phenomenal, especially that 2v2 down bot lane. Uh, it's just something that he's so comfortable with. Uh, I, I'm so happy to see more punishment towards uh, some of the melee supports being blinded like this. Paros, of course, a fantastic Alistar, uh, but uh, Targamas, you know, Senna, he's always like those quirky champions, and you know, the Zyra, the Senna, and for him to find this angle uh, in the BO5s, uh, it's just a super strength to have. Yeah, and the fact, again, that it set him up so much damage, so much threat in that bot side, even like the fact that you then have not only like a big damage threat than Nila, but the push potential that you get from having that Senna beside them as well. They were taking, I think it was four turret plates without even a Rift Herald for themselves as well. It was absolutely absurd. So definitely a huge amount of control in that bot side. And it did nullify Paris. I think Paris, again, fantastic game on the, the Alistair. I mean, even that play that we just saw, that very first clip in this, where it was like, oh, okay, he's actually got the headbutt pulverized, or the pulverized headbutt combo even, I should say, underneath the tower. Maybe they're going to get the kill back here onto Kalis but it wasn't the case. And it flash forward from Targum, it starts at all 10, 1 and 10. That is a monstrous scoreline for support. And honestly, what a great resurgence for himself as well. Every time we see a player sort of move into an upper league, such as the LEC, falling them back down to ERLs. And even though he he didn't fall far from home cases where he basically uh, got recognized over in Europe, it feels like him having such a great performance sort of starts building up hope again for the Targums that we got to know. I think it also just shuts down a lot of what Istanbul Wildcats have been finding success with. Like a lot of when you look domestically has been, hey, it's Bell and Paris who are getting these early leads through the bottom lane 2v2, yeah. that aggressive style, and then being able to push that forward. But I mean, when we look at this, yes, we've had Kalis and Targamas in game one fall behind, but they're consistently finding these ways to get back into it. This game, they take over completely. And now you're kind of going back to the drawing board for Wildcats going, well, 
what the hell are you going to do here? Oh, it's so tricky because I, I think the main thing is I, they need to find ways to keep Cabo shut off tanks. I think that Cabo uh, does such a good job of connecting in the game, and I think that solves the issue that K-Corp has had sometimes in how disconnected they are in the mid to late game. And I think the fact that they've been greedier in their approach to how they draft, and allow themselves to breathe more and have a composition that scales better and has more tools to execute later. Uh, they can kind of get through the early game through how strong they are because it's like I was saying it in the green room. It's like if I, if, if my Scion is only 15 CS ahead uh, behind against Rumble, I'm picking Scion every game against Rumble. He's such a solid rock. It's like this gold deficit, this minus 5-4-3, that is a monumental, monumentally positive stat, <laughs> considering he lane against the biggest lane bully that exists right now. I mean, Trouble was headed backstage. Look at that kill participation. Yeah. For a top laner? Top laner. <laughs> <laughs> One top laner gets 75% kill participation. <laughs> like, that is an absurd ratio to have. And, I mean, it does say a lot about Cabo, right? The fact, the 5-1-32, he's getting involved in so many of these uh, opportunities, these engages, and they are playing so well around this five-man unit. And even then, when you look at, like, you know, around the 11 to 16-minute mark, I mean, destroy is getting destroyed. Every single time they're like, we are TPing in behind you twice, three times in game one. Then in, the, in this game, we're like, oh, we have control. Good, we won't bother with the TP. We're just going to run immediately into your lane and completely get you out of the position. So it feels like they're not only just linking up with Cabo well, but then when it comes to these team fights as well, they're doing such a good job of playing around him. Even on the sign here as well, it looked like in the mid lane, we had a bit of a skirmish that could have gone the way of Istanbul Wildcats. And immediately it's like, choo-choo, Cabo shards here. <laughs> <laughs> and just rinses that entire Drifting through the ramp, of course. It feels like for K-Corp, they kind of just know what role each and every one of them plays, right? You take the owner away from Kabochad, he'll slam down the Scion. And of course, I think it's a little bit dangerous also for draft-wise to target him twice on the Orn and the Scion. Now, of course... We had a little bit of a, of a hmm when it came down to the draft. We saw that Wildcats actually had more of a front-to-back-ish comp, but so far it feels that Wildcats are trying to either steal away or ban away champions that work for Casey, such as the Nico, such as the Zeri, ban away the Orn, but didn't necessarily seem to work out for them. I was just so surprised that they slammed the Rumble there on too. I thought that maybe uh, they're going to run back to Jace, uh, pick a different jungler, uh, this time around, they managed to lock in Sejuani on five, which is fine. But then again, you're picking it when you have Nico and Rumble. Uh, so that pairing already uh, in the first place, Nico and Rumble, even though sure, Nico might provide you some setup, uh, just the value you get from Mercs and just, just magic resistance overall makes it a lot tougher because both of these champions want to itemize Sorcerer Shoes into, of course, the Hextech Protobelt. So I think just in terms of how they set up their one, two, three on red side is not working. I imagine that at least when they go on blue side, they will have a lot more room to actually slam the strongest jungler on the patch, uh, which most likely will be a Maokai or maybe a Rel, and we'll just see how that dynamic plays out where Synchrof maybe has to go deeper into his pool. Yeah, and I think that's where at least we'll get something a little bit different for Synchrof, but it does kind of feel like, to me, I stand about Wildcats, I threat in shallow water. Like, we consistently see this rumble. Yes, it gets good damage, but it's not really doing anything, right? It looks like Ferret hasn't really looked comfortable in any sort of matchup into the Maokai, so that's kind of struggling a little bit as well. And even Koft in the mid lane, like, he got the, his Jace in game number one, didn't really get up to too much. Then coming into this as well, trying to bring out the Nico, not looking too much. Whereas when you look at the opposite side, Forsaken, he's getting bands tossed at him left, right, and bloody center, and he's still coming out looking great. So it just feels like when you're trying to dig down into, hey, what have we got? I mean, this is a prime example of where Carmine Corp just seem to have this number one customer in draft. So it feels like more of another performance right here for Wildcats. And of course, to remind everyone, in spring finals, they went 0-2 to down to Unicorns of Love Sex Edition, and they managed to bounce back with a reverse sweep. And we have confirmed they have pressed the panic button that we talked about yesterday, Yamato, and they switched sides over to blue. Yeah, I think they need to do something here, but... I like, as you say, you can get your hands in the Maokai, maybe get some of these big picks coming through, but it's not only the fact that you're falling behind in draft, it feels like a lot to me that Istanbul Wildcats just aren't able to keep a pace with Carmine Corp in so many of these situations, where Carmine Corp, Corp be expected to play this incredibly aggressive style coming into this, and we're seeing that in the early stages, where they're playing heavily around the bot side, they're the ones that are actually finding success around a lot of these skirmishes, and then they're cleaning up a lot of the big issues that we highlighted at the start of the day, where they're not quitting corners anymore, they're making sure that they have priority, and then immediately moving Seiken and Targamas around the map, so it's becoming very difficult for Wildcats to try and find that stability that they like, like we talked about, you know, the massive goal difference you have for Carmine Corp. When they get a lead, they can drive through that no problem. For Wildcats, it's about getting to those later fights, and they're just not being allowed to get to those later fights. 
It's also so difficult. I feel like that the biggest change up they need to make is just in the top lane. Because both of these games, the Orn, the Scion, they were way too impactful. Like the top lane gap was so, so massive in the fights that were occurring in the game. Cabo was, uh, you know, uh, itemizing Solari, even in this game, went all the way to redemption. His idea of what he wanted to achieve in the game was so, so clear. He was always making sure that he was there whenever a fight went down. He was willing to sacrifice any form of CS. If they're going to go in a direction where they pick Rumble again, I think they're in big trouble. They need to walk away from Rumble. Uh, they need to make uh, sure that the top lane matchup, you know, now they're on blue side, so counter picking top is going to be less of a real thing, but they need to bring in champions that uh, actually punish very, very hard when they're left uh, on their own. Like a Jax that can break a turret, uh, you get like a swing timer or maybe an Aatrox that gets to farm, or maybe you uh, bust out like a Renekton Malka just to make top lane a little bit more volatile that it actually makes sense to stay in lane because the cover has been way too effective. Yeah. And just to zoom out the picture a little bit, this is the last chance Wildcats get. This is the last game they could potentially play to start turning the series around. And of course, it, it means a lot for the Turkish organization, you know, from having the TCL2 Worlds, now being at EMEA Masters, you need to prove the strength of the region, right? And this is the last representative of the region, the former champions. Seiken says it in the trailer as well. Did you miss us? Because we came to take back what's ours. Yeah, it feels like, you know, mom's come home. <laughs> <laughs> back to your room. <laughs> yeah, it's like, you had your fun, you know? It's, just, it's like, put all the toys away, it's over. Um, it, look, especially as you say for the TCL, right? Dennis Bank Wildcats were so dominant there. It's kind of hard to kind of look and go, hey, look, they, they were clearly the number one. They came in last year and it was like, UOL versus them as to who's going to come out on top. And it, the Wildcats were able to take in the end. But now they got to see if they can finally find some foothold against Carmine Corp because, hey, you won once, but the triple threat is here and Carmine Corp potentially taking a 3-0 sweep now against them. Yeah, of course, with the side switch as well for Wildcats, opting towards that blue side you guys mentioned, potentially looking for a Marco, a very strong jungler, to get Ferret set up for the game. Hasn't necessarily performed to the standards that we had him on, especially being a, a world's kind of jungler as well. So let's see what's going to change here. First change in the bounce as well, the Rakan coming through. Interesting. I, I wonder now if the idea is that they are going to look for Zeri and they want to deny Zaya Rakan. I'm not so sure. Uh, Kekop still following uh, in line with the same bands. The question is, oh, okay. So they're looking to maybe first pick Zaya. Maybe that's the angle here from, from uh, uh, the Wildcats. Yeah, I'm curious if maybe you see the Zaya band come through or if they want to stick with the Poppy band here for Carmine Corp. That is going to be in the big well. one. Maokai is the other one, yeah. So I'm curious. So it is going to be Maokai. So yeah, I think your Zaya may be up there with the Zeri gun or you can just go for the Poppy as well. But it's a bit of a weird one now, but Oh, okay. Actually, gonna go over towards the Azir instead. Okay. I wonder if Kekop now uh, <laughs> just say, we're gonna pick Rumble Jace now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we're gonna tell you that you done messed up and these champions are really open and strong. Because <laughs> Kabo has had success with Rumble too. And I don't know if Destroy is uh, ready to play the tanks the same way that Kabo did. So it's definitely an angle that they could present here. Uh, especially because Syncroft even went so far to play a game of Zac. Uh, this is something they locked in, but most likely the Wildcats should be looking to pick a, a Poppy if it's available. So, okay, okay. Talia it is. Okay, so could still be a jungle Talia, but we'll have to see exactly what the game plan is. I still think you're probably going to get a some some kind of top lane pick here, potentially coming through for Cabra Shard, Maybe or you could go with Zaya. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think it's a bit of a it's a bit of a strange one because I assumed that we'd see like a Sejuani and the um, the Jace come through or something along those lines. So then you can try and set up for that Ooh. strong pick, but. Looks like with the poppy open as well, they're just going to say, hey, look, we can flex the poppy around the place, we can flex this Talia around the place as well. Let's see exactly what we want to go for. It's a very strong answer into the Azir. The W gets value and also Talia, poppy. It's, it's quite a deadly combination because you just wall behind and then uh, the poppy is going to find value. Very strong jungler here, especially because Malka is already out. That's usually the biggest threat to a poppy. Uh, but you, you tend to find value together with the Talia almost always uh, against the Azir. So, so I kind of like it. Now the question, what's going to happen with AD? That's the big one. Yeah. Oli, it feels like we're back in uh, 2022. We're hoping <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. This is a Lushanami, Ziriumi, maybe. No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Maybe a Corky on the other side. <laughs> I am curious to see exactly what happens here, though, because you can still put the Poppy into the top side, right? And then you're still in a fairly, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry, decent position for Synchrob. You can then go for something that isn't as tanky into the, the 1v1. Um, but we we'll have to see exactly what the game plan is going to be. Zaya locked in here for Dennis Bank Wildcats. And then, yes, yeah, Aiken. Oh, this would be sick. This would be so cool. 
the, I, if Synchro plays Talia Jungle, then I'm just leaving right now. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way. There's no way. <laughs> All right, there we go. Ezra makes sense. Decent into Zaya. He did it for you. Trundle. Uh, like already the composition for Keiko, very easy to play front to back and, and Zaya and Azir are going to kind of suffer. Uh, it's very important now for the Wildcats that they try to draft <laughs> tools that can actually allow them to find access, but it's already from the one, two, three. I feel like Keiko, with how the game's played out, are quite ahead here. I was going to say, you know, you ban the Nautilus because an Alistair doesn't do anything into Carmen Corp's composition. So Nautilus taken off the board. A lot of your other big engage supports are Rock kind of already out. The dust. Yeah, is out. So, you're kind of out of the, the options here for the support. And then if you even wanted to look in towards like something Leona, for destroying topside. But even, yeah, Leona maybe. But you take, a, take away something like the, the Orn or something even for destroying that topside. And I mean, Leona, sure. But I mean, Ezra is going to be able to dodge away from that, no problem. And everyone else is is fairly OK. So and there's not really great follow up regardless. So they just need to find buttons somehow. Yeah. They need to have buttons. They need to be able to pressure this Talia because Ezra or Talia you know, if they are in sync in the game, things get tough. Atros gets removed, which kind of uh, tells me once again that yeah. uh, Cabo's going to be looking to pick a little, yeah. <laughs> a little tank <laughs> <the> four or five. <laughs> He's going to be chilling. Gwen is a potential angle if they decide to pick, uh, of course, uh, the top lane on four. So I feel like Jacob is better off maybe picking uh, the top lane on five because I yeah. think Gwen is one of those champions that can actually cut through uh, the likes of Jacob's one, two, three. So maybe just uh, slam the support here on four. Um, could be a Leona. I mean, yeah, I even just denying the Leona way would be really, really nice. Um, I'm trying to think what else you could even potentially go for, but with like oh. Rel, Alistair already off the board, the Nautilus off the board, um, may, yeah, Rakan gone as well. Like you're so far down the, the pecking order here, but Ooh, yeah, it looks okay. like the Brahmin's just That's gonna be in. Here, I wonder if the Wildcats are just going to slap Milio because Milio, you get synergy with Azir, you have the range into Brom. Because if they try to pick an engage support into Brom, I think it's going to be rough. Is that the Nico support that is being hovered again? <laughs> That's just the, yeah. the meta. Okay. <laughs> just wanted to say, would the Brom here be sort of like a decline towards a potential Orn coming in from Destroy? You guys said you wanted some non-committal engage coming in from the Wildcats, and they still are lacking frontline. Your only frontline is Strangle here. Can't necessarily engage with him, just has the pillar. So would this be some... Oh, Never no. mind, it's, <laughs> it's the three-peat. Okay. It's, we're running it back. I, I love the Milio. I don't like the Rumble. <laughs> I, I think... I think it's it's not the way because the what the, the, the Orn is just gonna come in, the tank is gonna come in. Sure, you have the Trundle, but I feel like you have counterplay uh, to, to, to play around it. Uh, Nar would be the safer option against Trundle, but it kind of removes them from the recipe. I think they should yeah. stick to it. Just, yeah. you know, mean, just if it ain't broke, don't fix just it. Build right? some <laughs> items and lane, and just enjoy, enjoy your time. You know, it's, it's it's all good. Doesn't matter if Trundle loots you. I feel like the Rumble kind of ruins yeah. it all. I feel like if yeah. they were the ones to pick a little tank day on five, even if they have Brom, don't worry about it. You just need some buttons because Milio, I think, is good with Azir and Zaya. But now I, I, I this this Rumble is so out of place because he has less setup than in any of the other games that we've seen so far. I feel like it's going to be a couple of gap again. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to add to this. I really just don't like this Rumble pick for Destroy. Yeah. It's been a bit of a disaster. And again, you have... Uh, sorry, I was about to say words I can't. Like, where, where's your engage? <laughs> like, what do you do? Like, what do you do as Volcats? Like, if you want to start a fight, it's like... Uh, the key thing, if Pillar. anything, right? Oh, like, <laughs> like, like, if anything, Bao needs to be smurfing with the Milio W on him. They have a good yeah. matchup. If he is willing to actually posture forward and he plays like he's prime ruler or something and he actually engages with Desire, yeah. that could be the way in. But then Bao really needs to pop off. And if they find like item timings where Ezra has a tier, Trinity, and is weaker, maybe that's the window in. It feels like we're not very satisfied with what Wildcats are showing so far, especially those that top lane. Of course, the story was a primarily AP user top laner over in Spring. His Gwen has looked incredible. Should have picked this Gwen here, yes. <laughs> 100%. Are you telling me? Tell him. He's <laughs> <telling> me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> he looked at me, he's like, yes, that one. Yes, <laughs> <the> friend. <laughs> Take it away, <laughs> initial has an Amera. Gwen, please, no. Take it away. The rage at this rumble has been probably well deserved, actually. Let's be honest, it's been a rough time for Destroy. Um, also, like, obviously, you kind of hear it there. It's Cabo shot again on the tank. It's Destroy back again on the rumble and a lack well, of engage options. This is the thing, right? Like, it kind of feels like Wildcats, they're sat there and Team Comms going, like, 
It's between Paris, and I guess Destroyer's in the conversation, and you've also got that for Ferret, where they're just like, oh, so who's playing the one tank this game? It's like, oh, I guess I'll do it this time. Well, it definitely does feel like that. And uh, uh, perhaps in a more important question, when are we getting the Parrot cosplay from Yamato? That hammer, <laughs> it's genius. It could be like a ban hammer, you could like, ban the rumble truly itself. Outrageous. Actually, truly outrageous. Truly outrageous. The thing is, I've Come grown on. to I've grown to really hate Tarek recently because of his Why? power in arena. Of course. Every time that champion gets through in that mode, which of course is just a part of this until December, I really? I I lose a little bit of faith in my myself and humanity. Uh, for not banning that one champion. Uh, luckily, not on the Rift here, though. But we do have ourselves another Warden-ish kind of support in that Braum. I think that the Braum could be somewhat helpful in regards to um, at least kind of styming the engage. If someone like Ferret runs forwards, if you get the mark onto him from your passive, then he has a bit of a hard time. Not that he's had an easy time this series anyway. That's one thing. But also, he can leap back over the pillar if he's the one caught out. I think Harmony Corp, they're very happy playing front to back with this composition as the Death oh, Sink. See Callist and Targamus in pretty deep here at the level one. Brom level one. Out of it, that will be Syncrov heading on down as well. Does land the Winter's Bite, but nothing more to be found. Ward goes down early, and Syncrov will start off on these Raptors. And Kami Gore again with the early pathing options from Syncrov. Not going to be a blue invade this time, it's going to be a Raptor invade at level one. I mean, Kami Core have just been so much better at assessing their aggressive options very early into the game. We have seen Syncrov invade every <laughs> single game. Not a level one in the first two games, but in this one, it works out more than fine. Ferret on this trundle can have some very uh, good power, uh, kind of catching out isolated tanks like the Orn or even the Braum or the, the Poppy. Uh, once you have a couple of levels and maybe that Divine Sunder in, but it is way off that mark right now. Syncroft walks away with two camps and immediately we're getting towards late game Poppy, which is you have all of your basic abilities, not level three yet. Level but two is just going fine. towards it and the Braum level oh, one no. makes up for any power you're Oh missing. no, they missed the Q, but they can still get the charge in. Bowflash to win, has to use the heal. Summoners burn, but they stay left and have a Syncroft now with possibly in a spot of ball there. Not quite be able to get anything more because, of course, the feather pull wasn't available quite yet. But three summoners down in trade for just Targamus Flash. You take that every uh, day. Of the Ferret week. has only just discovered that his camps are gone. Oh, he sees no. that camps is gone and he sees the red buff down on Syncroft as well. I think from seeing the CS number, he'll know that uh, Syncroft has taken all of those camps. Not going to be able to get over to the other side of the map to steal something, though. This is going to be a pillar, up, maybe a nice flash pillar. That's it. Yeah, he does get the flash out. Well, that's a decent shuffle back, though. The seismic shuffle doing a lot of work, Saken. Down on mana, but Kof did pretty yeah. low here. Remember, there's no flash on Saken, and the minion wave is just about in the way that cannon would refuse to de aggro on Kof Actually, Kof comes out with less HP than Saken did despite the gank. Now, Syncroft has himself red buff to blue buff. Ferret mm -hmm. doesn't exactly have himself the best combat stats right now. Still a trundle at level three, though, and I don't know how much Poppy's going to enjoy this. The job comes out, and Syncroft ends up on the wrong end of the Targamus, and Sagan here to be hit first. Flash Blood goes over the way of the trundle, though, and the flash will not keep Syncroft alive. Couple early misplays across a couple games now from this jungle. It gets a little over eager in Ferret's face. The difference is the pushing bot lane is actually Bao and Paris for the first jungle fight of the game. Yes, they got gank ganked early by Syncroft, but they still have control of the wave. And Callist and Targamus cannot flip the play in Calming Core's favor. Now, this is step one. You need to do yeah. an awful lot more than this. Again, we've kind of said that the five man composition from the Wildcats is a lot harder to play than Kami's Corp, Kami Corps. But in the early fights, if you have yourself pushing lanes, most of the time it doesn't even matter what champions you have if they turn up to the play and make that impact first. This red buff's a little bit more aggressive than usual. Gets a hold of this one, gets his red buff back. It turns out it was a poppy all along. So, huh, I recognize this. This is my first, this is my first red buff. Where did you get this one from? <laughs> Spawns in the river these days. It's where the new preseason works, you know. It's the, it's the extra extra jungle camp. Yeah, just, Which, just whichever angry... champion you find first. Red buff is no longer a Brambleback, it's just a really angry Yordle. <laughs> Poppy is not that angry. I'm gonna defend her That's on true. this. That's true. That's fair. Fairly chill. I feel like I feel She's like... just a Yordle with a hammer. She says it herself. I feel like Timo's the Yordle with the most seething rage inside. Uh I would not trust him with any degree of power of uh, my own safety, yes. That that um, smile hey, having said, we evil. do now have late game Poppy who is red buff level oh, yeah. three. So here we go again. see if they can do anything here. I don't think they can. I think that uh Bam Harris have sniffed that one out. Very important that the Varus uh desire. Milio get themselves yes. ahead early. This is a very lane dominant pick, and the way that this duo plays is they pop the cozy campfire and they run at you with extended range. That's very soft pseudo engage. It's the kind of mm -hmm. thing where you maybe see like oh, I, I think it was someone like Jackie Love over in the LPL yes. would continue playing around that too. But they need to have a lead. You get leads by playing through early skirmishes like this if at all possible. Once again, Paris is 
The first one to impact the jungle matchup, but I don't know if they're going to get a clean steal here. Smite and five for oh. ferrets. Quite at that upgrade to smite marks. Not going to quite be able to get anything like an yep. easy smite option, so they have to pull away from that invade. And Synchrov will be allowed to claim that one despite an attempt in from the Wildcats jungle support. Bow started off with a cult. So he's going to have himself a little bit more cash in the bank. Of course, Colos has the tier on the other side. So they're both getting some extended value from their first laning purchases. Yet to really see the first huge players of the game impacting these lanes. Though you can see once again, Destroy as Rumble does. Doing well in the tank matchup individually. But much like we've seen in the previous games of this series, hasn't really transferred that need to see that if they stay alive in this series. It's things like that little ward in the bush there that's been around a few series in a row where Destroy's been teleported, flanked on. He's had everyone roam up there. And he's been playing this lane largely by himself, honestly. We haven't seen a lot of parrots. We haven't seen a lot of ferret. And it's left Destroy, despite early lean lanes, in a really difficult position, just team-wise. And he's playing a shoving champion like a Rumble. I think one of the big differences between Spring and Summer, um, Wildcats, of course, they changed their Elramir for Ferret, has been a bit of that connective tissue between the jungle and the lanes in regards to that top lane. We saw Paris roaming across the map on stuff like Nautilus and Spring to great effect. The Blitzcrank as well mm. called out. Um, and of course, someone like Elramir would be on call for the early top lane plays. That works out well for them. But it does feel like Destroy has been left alone on the island. You very rarely seen Paris on the top side of the map. You very rarely seen Ferret being there to impact things. I think in this game, though, it does feel like with Synchroft being uh, hemmed back just a little bit, at least on an individual level, Wildcats give themselves a bit of a reprieve. In a shock to everyone involved, uh, Flash from Targamus. Wait, what? Yeah, you're right, he did. He went down towards the bot side. We're going to see a bit of an attempted engage down here. Doesn't quite land, though. So Paris and Gao burn a summoner each, but it's the Flash from Targamus doesn't lead to that much. And Callist with the heal down as well. Even ish trade in the bot lane. Okay, two for two in summoners. One of those is a Flash, so more value there in terms of what's lost from Targamus. And Saken is not going to be. Here to stop the crash in from Kufta onto the mid lane. He's going to get a couple of love taps on the tower. Ferret takes, I think, two camps away from that top side. I don't mm. think Red Buff had spawned away at that point. Uh, so Ferret at least gets himself some individual jungle matchup as well. Braun passive being stacked, looking for it. Land, that's a big chunk. Forced to flash away from the tree shot. Barrage Callist gets away, gets the arcane. Or rather, the uh, arcane shift. There we go. Losing my words briefly there in the madness. Very low goes bow, but stays alive for now. Miles Whoa. off by days. <laughs> These HP bars have been getting very close to zero. Yeah, it feels like every time Zayat like loads up an auto attack, you just go, "What well, is this really going to give him a buff so they get that extra, you know, attack range as well for the next follow-up one? Am I in danger here?" <laughs> right. Turns out you are. On the other side, though, Kalis and Togwas get that XP advantage. Very close run things in the bot side of the map, but this time it does feel like KC not as easily finding themselves at least the individual skirmish. Objectives. Herald has now spawned, which means that it is now a battle of who has the better R buttons cast at that point. If they do want to go towards that at all. Ferret heading towards the top side of the map. Cabochard currently pushed under turret. We know that Orn can respond to these Heralds. Mm. But as it stands, I don't think Carmen Corp would love to fight this objective. It's been the standard tale of the tournament this series that K Corp get themselves first Dragon, while Wildcats get themselves first Herald. Looks like we're on track to have that happen again. Mid lane, though, Kofta. Being stunned up briefly, but Paris is there to make sure everyone's still alive and healthy for now. And Ferret continues to bash away at this crab. And Ferret is uh, going to continue to have a much more stable early game. Mm. Something that he has wanted an awful lot, even after the early invade coming through. One Synchrov, it's not like he's fallen behind on an individual level. I think that the Trundle will be very important catching out members from Carmen Corp. But again, it does feel like they need this early lead because it's going to be harder to find those players. Whoa. They're making one now. Oh, maybe they can make it happen anyway. So you can have to flash, but overcomes comes targets. But Paris is going to be here as well. How much more can be found? Because again, the engage options are pretty damn limited. Nothing much happens aside from Saken being forced mm. to burn the flash. Early lead towards the Wildcat. We saw this in game one, and it did not work in the mid game. I didn't. What we saw just there is something that uh, Georgia has been very passionate about talking about is this support matchup. Yes. They are both there, either trying to instigate or mitigate this play in the mid lane. Ta Paris and Targamus, how good have these guys been over the last year or so? Very is the answer. You know, Targamus ha had himself some rough moments, of course, in the LEC. His XL career did not exactly work out. Before that, he was an LEC champion. Paris, current Amir Masters champion as well, reigning from that. Now, both of them showing their chops here. Exactly. And I do want to take a moment here as well to remind people that, like, yes, this lead is good, but there is also something to be said for the fact that 
Wildcat's comp without the engage. Feels like they're gonna have to be in the river first for a lot of these objectives. And I think over the last two games, they've been late to a lot of these objectives pretty consistently. What, what they would love to happen is for them to have enough vision to catch someone who's slow on rotation and away from the group of Kami Core. If you can catch out a Syncroft or hell, even a Cabochard uh, with a good pillar or something like that, then you can run them down, especially if Zaya starts getting the items in his ear, starts getting the items. Trundle helps them cut through stragglers. My worry there is, though, that over the last two games, Kami Core have just been faster than Wildcat. The desk echoed it. I uh, completely agree with that sentiment that he'll have to do a little bit better this game if they need that mm. to work. We'll have to track that one, because if they don't, that's them out of the tournament. It is Kami oh, Core yeah. ramping up towards what feels like an another inevitable, inevitable run out of Mere Masters. There's just always that fear with this team that they will go on and do the entire thing. There are some great teams here, of course, at Mere Masters. It doesn't feel like they are stand out as favorites. There are multiple teams which could contest, and I'm very excited to see that for one yeah. Um Wildcats, though, they were one of those favorites. Right. Now they're really getting showed the boot, getting showed the door. They are fighting to keep themselves in it. 6-0 in group, reigning champions. You wouldn't know it, seeing who they're up against. This game's gone a bit better again, at least. They're up to a nice early, nice double route there, but the door comes up. That bank vault is sealed nice and tight, courtesy that Crime City Braum skin. And they'll uh, back away from that little trade. So, slight lead towards the Wildcats. We have Dragon up in 20 seconds. Is uh, pointing out on our street screen. I got you. I think with the, uh, the mid lane push, of course, Wildcats will get themselves into River first if they so wish. They have themselves the ultimates they need, and they have Flash coming up for Bao. The Fallout, though, they want to get themselves some plates off the mid lane, so Cupped up and get himself a little bit of a lead. Everyone with marginal leads on the side of the Wildcats. Let's see how long they last, though, if Kami Core come to fight around our side. 2v3 currently in the mid lane, and Cabochard is here a lot faster than the Rumble. Won't quite land that knockout blow they were looking for briefly, but now Paris is very alone here in the river. Roams up in an awkward position, has to flash over the wall and burn the last breath. Breath of Life, I apologize. Last Breath being Yasuo. Well, the, the concept is similar in terms of breathing and ultimate, so I'll take it. I'm just going to leave that one <laughs> yeah. there. Can you imagine Vilio with Yasuo? I mean, well? they knocked the wind out of his sails. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to see if he can buff up Bao to do something around this choke point. So now, Kamikor, they've been forced out of River. And if you have Bao here with Alt Flash and Ghost with a Milio campfire on top of him, this is the point in the game where KC needs to be very, very careful about that Zaya uh, running the fight. Neither of these teams, though, feel confident enough to go towards the Dragon and stick on it. So we are left in a bit of a slower stalemate. It is just a bit tense around this river. Paris nearly gets caught, but does escape with it. Back towards the river. The pillar almost good in that choke point, but doesn't land too much. And again, you see that? No. the damage for sure on Wildcat's side. Straight CC, a little hard to come by. That's why they're fighting so hard to keep Kami Core in those choke points. Because if you have a pillar in those choke points, because you can't avoid the, the, the pillar slow area, it becomes quite good CC. Maybe at that point you can have Azir Soldiers doing enough. Maybe you can have an Equalizer doing enough as well. It's just really hard to play around yeah. because if Kami Core are not around that terrain, very hard to land what you're saying. So Kami Core, it's a back and forth. They were forced out of river, but they worked their way back into it. Resets come through from the Wildcats. They are not willing to stand and fight around the second dragon of the game. They're the ones that claim that second dragon, and they're the ones that feel just that little bit predestined, don't they? Three and three in groups. Somehow, someway, every time, every time they're in Amir Masters, well, they just end up becoming I'm, monsters as the tournament goes up. I'm not willing to say it, say it to that degree of confidence right now, because Wildcats, they've reverse swept their way to a finals in spring as well. They've got enough. Tell that to the K-Corp fans. They have all the faith required. <laughs> They do, but I am here as an unbiased, neutral observer, enjoying some good <laughs> League of Legends as Fliss barely missing out on those skill shots, which would have forced Bao a little bit further back into this lane Ooh, phase, wow. but still, it does feel like, again, with the game slowing down, with Wildcats able to get to a couple of items before the first big games fights in the game come out, they feel a lot happier in this game. I think now if they start fighting around Milio buffing up the one item, Zaya, you can run forward with Ghost, I think that's when they start feeling a lot more confident. Yes, they do, and it is a good gold lead. We saw this in game one, and it stalled here for a long time because the counter punches kept coming through and Wildcats couldn't snowball effectively. They need to be a lot cleaner in the mid game, and Kalmin Core have been very decisive, very quick, and very deadly, frankly, with their coordination in the mid game over the last two games. Looking to do that again in this one as Targmas does step forward, but ends up on the wrong end of a load of feathers and uh, loses about a third of his health bar as a result. Now, Again, so much of this game is on Bao just playing absolutely psychotically. 
Because Zyre is very good. Zyre is very good. We've seen him oh. win a tournament with it before. He has himself the ultimate, but he needs to be using this power spike. Syncroft's coming in. No, he's there. They're going to try and jump him. Featherstorm comes up. It's not fantastic. The feathers go in the wrong direction. They'll stay alive for now, though. But that is the flash. That's the ghost down. No. They had a ward in that tri bush. They knew he was around until he got swept out. Realistically, they weren't sending that around for the kills. So the direction of the feathers doesn't matter True that enough. much. All that matters is that he gets out of life. He does lose his ult, though. He loses his summoners. And he gets his recall stopped by an Ezreal ult, as we just saw on the minimap. So, cross map for the Herald is calming for denying something in this bot lane matchup. Herald is going to get taken by Ferret, though, so at least those two neutral objectives taken up by the TCL first seed. Despite two Heralds their name, Wildcats still lose first turret, and that's not the best thing you've ever heard in your life if you're a Wildcats fan, hoping for another one of those reverse sweeps, but maybe this time they'll be the one punishing the top lane. They will start with the Equalizer. Kabashan flashes, the pillar's already down, but they have so much damage they can continue to keep going forwards. The Subjugate is down, and that is a very roasted Orn. God dead in the top side destroy. Tanks a lot of the tower shots, though, and now he's left on the wrong side of this. I think it'll end up being a one-for-one. One. He'll try and execute, I think, to the turret, or at least give it over to Cabo Shard. Flash from Saken to secure the kill. So, Saken really wanted that kill participation. Gets himself some gold on the board as well. For the first time in this series, it feels like Ferret has headed topside and got something for it, but even then, it's not as clean as they would have liked. Pillar Force of the Flash, but Cabo Shard takes so long to die as Orn so often does when he's underneath his turret, that it does, of course, eventually lead to the one for one. Force you to destroy because of the flash used. He was on the wrong side of the turret and had to uh, exit the other way, and Saken, with that Weaver's Wall and a flash, decides, I will be having that kill. Gonna have to have himself that uh, significant advantage just before that point. He has the Demonic Embrace, so individually, Kabashar's not gonna be able to do that much in the matchup. It doesn't matter, though, what we've seen in previous games in the series is that he will have a team fight in Oh, yes, he will. We've seen that mirrored across the globe, even. I think teams like, um, I guess, Weibo with the Shy is a really good example of this, and other uh, top global teams, they're looking for that team fight impact. It's quite hard to enable individual advantages in top lane. And, uh, we've seen that with destroying this very series. Yeah, and again, part of it as well is just how carefully teams play around top lane advantages too, because Kami Corp being very willing to get wards in the right place mm -hmm. to punish Destroy for being isolated, either by his own doing or his team's lack of coordination with him, and I think it's probably a bit of both, as often is with top lane, but either way, the end result has been mid-games that have gone very poorly for Destroy's Rumble. We are very much into that mid-game now. So far, so good at least. Well. So now we have ourselves a bit of a slowdown once again. It has felt like the faster-paced games have gone the way of Calming Core. Mork has lost their heads a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, can they find themselves a way to speed up the game again? Maybe you're waiting for Saken's next ult. Maybe you're waiting for Synchrov's flash. Maybe you're looking for a lapse in vision. I'll be also waiting for us. This third dragon to spawn in about 45 seconds. I think everyone's going to be about that one item mark and destroy. Not again. Surely not again. No flash. No hope. And the teleport comes to claim the rumble again. I. I wish I could say something new. We've seen this one a lot. Just play the tape again. Destroy goes down. Is there a cross map? There is a Herald in inventory for the Wildcats if they want to use it, but they've been slow on dropping it if they want to use it. There's another teleport coming in. It's off the vision. Camshard has no ults. It's a 3v2. Kami Kora found some beautiful little angles here, Paris. Left in a difficult position, but throughout the heal. Does miss that Searing Charge, and now with coughed around and about. Maybe they can look to turn this around. Kabashad doesn't have the teleport either. And now with him pretty low and destroyed with teleport of his own, they can probably fight for this dragon a little bit more healthily than I think Kami Core can. Uh, you can see the real power which Bauer has when he starts putting on the afterburners and the buffs come through from the melee, but no ghost this time. Had to use that in the retreat from Kabashad. That might be the telltale sign of Kami Core having enough to oh, stop Bauer from damaging. Destroy just puts Tarn with his life. Absolutely in the oven, just about survives. The burn's not quite enough, but he is very, very low. Now they'll take this Herald into mid lane, look to claim that turret and destroy. Doesn't quite get the kill, but punishes well enough. Capital Shard, two charges away. Seismic Shove goes wide, and they will put down the Azir turret, get a charge into that tier Ooh. two, and head over to the Dragon to stop the stacking. Synchrov and Kalist have chunked out Ferret in the meanwhile. He's down half HP. Tarkmas has not had a chance to back. Bow goes up and is in a very odd angle. The Feather's in a difficult position as well, but he's found alive. The shuffle is beautiful from Kofta, who puts him on a dinner plate. They get the Dragon as well. They continue to fight. Kalist hopping away. Still has the flash. Has had to pop it. Just about survives. They know where he is, and they'll know he'll be backing away 
The Wildcats find an awkward angle, but they make it work. And the Kitty Cats got claws. The TCL first seed, they reverse swept their way to their title in spring. It's only the quarterfinals this time. It's a little earlier, but when you need to consider these two teams, maybe it is a matchup worthy of such an occasion. How do they do it around this fight, though? A lot of the hard work has been done by this point. The front line is not in position from Kami Court. You could argue that Bow isn't as well, but he's got a Feather Storm, so he gives himself a bit of extra degree of error. They have to make the big play to take down the smite and they walk away with a dragon and a couple of kills. This time, remember, Targamus and Cabo Shard were super low before this fight even began. They didn't get a chance to reset. They got a little bit too over eager this time. He's pulling the teleports before that one, and now the gold lead swells a bit further. Wildcats have stopped the dragon stacking. They've got the shove in the mid lane. This is not a bad attempt at a response, though, but this is a trundle. Oh, nice. It's just so hard to get a hold of and take down. The pillar is good, and they just have nowhere near the damage to deal with this very beefy frontline right now. Didn't have the subjugate, so it could have been a little bit spooky, but cancels out the searing charge with that pillar. Now we've got ourselves a bit of a standoff, but both of our teams are on vision. Here we go, another charge to the wall. Maybe this time they can do ferret in, and they do just that. There's no subjugate. One second off it coming up, comes up but now. And they've got Baron alive. Kami Core could just turn to the big purple web. Kami Core were on vision. There was a ward right over the wall. Maybe they didn't see Ka Kavashard around the other side, but that is such a misstep from Farrah. Targum has taken about half HP. Remember, Destroy has the equalizer. It will need to be good. The wall comes down, and Destroy gets onto the other side of it, down to 4,000 HP. They really want to ensure this one goes wrong. Saken getting burned down. It's a lot of low health bars. In the back of the pit, they have got the Baron. They need to get out. The flashes are there, though. And Carmine Core get out, only losing one. What a mistake from Ferret. It was a very momentary thing, but it only takes one second for that to happen. And uh, I think after it's very lucky that Galist does not have himself an ultimate to snipe down that recall at that point as well. Kami Court, they walk away with the Baron, and after an early game that we have praised a lot more in this series from Wildcats, they throw it away at the Baron. And how many times across this season have we seen the likes of a jungler at 20 minutes being picked by the losing team Getting a Baron and the game just swinging right back in the other way. It's been happening time and time and time again the whole like season a, long. I like to call it the Shakespeare meta, where Act 2 happens in 20 minutes. You find whether it's a comedy or a tragedy. About to find out which one it is. Forsaken, looking like a tragedy right now, as he is roasted to a crisp by, crisp by Destroy, who this time gets his own team to come and support <laughs> him in a side lane. Forsaken so falls down. He's had Forsaken. himself. <laughs> Forsaken. Gosh. How have they not done that one before? I feel I like that was a sick start. That's, that's a city dive. Yeah, well, but that is one of the solo laners with that Baron buff, which could have used it oh. so much down. Oh. Glist has good items. If this is a good fight, Glist carries this. Make it happen. The Keeper's Verdict comes down, destroy, taken desperately low, has got the flash, baby forced to pop it, overcomes Ferret. There's the flash down the pillar, just on the wrong side there. Now Ferret will throw down the Frozen Domain and scoot his way out of danger. The thing is, when Kami Core are fishing for players like this and looking for the kills rather than the wave control, they're not actually using their Baron power mm. play, but this is what it gets you if you Ooh. do catch someone out. There's the Equalizer down, Callist forced to jump away. Targamus does get down the Glacial Fissure. Everyone stays alive, and both teams just kind of aware that people are a little bit lazy about sticking around in these lanes. There's a pick available. Uh, Callist really trying to leverage their power right now on the Zeri. He was an absolute force of nature. The Ezreal, you can see him starting to flex his muscles, but it's much harder for him to um, really kind of like match the damage which Bao has at like the points in the game which we have been fighting. I think that Wildcats have made, done a good job of making the fights not about the Ezreal. He said it was a hard game for them to team fight around, and on the whole, they played well around the objectives to justify them picking this composition, but they do, of course, need to still finish it off. Oh, yeah. Um, Bao is still first and foremost kind of the main character of this Wildcats composition to see if they can close it out. He is in, you know, in talk about Kalis. This is a guy who played his very first game into Anila and now into an Ezreal. Three very different champions. Mm. Uh, for both him and Targamus, frankly, they have played very different lanes, very different champions, and a oh. very, very different situation. The mid game is Bow, forced to flash over the wall, gets out the wrong side of the seismic shoves. It won't quite land on him. Stays alive, but that's both summoners and the ultimate down. He's down to half HP. They're gonna have Dagger to go support to god. Paris just got absolutely orbitally nuked. The video is just gone. Bow so now it. doesn't have himself summoners or HP to defend this turret. And suddenly, without that Milio, this island is much less powerful. That pillar was brutal. Sigro forced to flash away, destroy, just clear out the wave for now. The mid lane turret at tier two. Taken desperately low, and you're right, Paris did get knocked out and knocked down. I with my eyes were on Bow, who was 
in the air and it's taken pretty damn low, but does survive okay, onto the dragon. So we go. Dragon is up. Calming Court again showing us their composition and their engage is much easier to play around. They've had that for the entirety of this series. And now, can Bao do anything without the Milio next to him? Especially with the extra movement speed and the uh, extra range. That is so much of this combo. You need Paris to be there to hypercharge Bao. They're not able to do it. And they have to walk away looking at Soul Point for Calming Court. It's not the 15 minute mark this time, it's more like the 24 minute mark. But either way, K, K Corp have done what they did in game one, have begun to claw back in this mid stages of the game. They've got themselves a Baron off a good pick, they've got themselves to Soul Point. And now the ornaments yep. are beginning to come through. Now the damage is beginning to spark. That is exactly what I wanted to talk about. Because you have two lockets on the side of Calming Court as well, which will give extra shields for yes. the team, which will make it harder to take down some of those backline members, which Wildcats would love to get their hands on. I do think that with the Trundle, they can fight to kill the first target as well, especially with big damage coming out of this Zaya. But it does feel beyond this point, it is just going to be so much harder. And the room for error is going to get so much less from Wildcats killing the first target. Teleport available, and that means Destroy is being jumped on. Teleport and response is pretty good, though. Seiko's gonna try and get over here, and they need to be a little bit afraid. The Equalizer isn't fantastic, but it prevents oh, Seiko from what? retreating. Kofta just gets eviscerated. What happened to the Azir? I... The Emperor's been dethroned in seconds. He's been turned into street food. That Kofta's been roasted up on the side. <laughs> that was... Very, very awkward from the Wildcats. And once again, they're losing in the side lane. Seik and Synchroff get much more value in Wildcats. They are losing control of this game. They lost themselves that Baron. They're losing their heads a little bit. And remember, lose this, they're out. The reigning champions could go out to the all-time champions. What a statement that would be. What a storyline it would be. What a return to Amir Masters would be. It's been a little while since K-Corp have been here. Uh, Ferret is on the wrong side of the map right now. I don't think he's been spotted. And He's got to be very glad that, that is the case. There are oh, a lot no. of Kami Corps members here. Very flash. He's going to fight Kalis. But wait, that might be bad for Kalis. He has to back away. The Weaver's Wall comes down. He's just about the other side of the wall. Take a look at the shelf. Can't quite find it. Ferret is still trying to run away this trundle, this troll. So hard to cake down. They don't have fire to cut the regeneration. How many D&D heads out there get that one? Soul Seismic Shove comes down and gets away with it. Ferret wheezes his way to safety. Oh man, but Ferret still to be in that position leaves his team in a bit of an awkward spot. Now, Destroy also once again caught out. Not just Ferret has had awkward moments in this oh. game. Destroy leading to his mid laner's death. Maybe you could have argued there was a better teleport ward to get to, but I think Kofta was just there as uh, trying to ensure that Destroy was stay alive. He kind of bears the burden for that. Uh, they do respond with a TP this time, but as you said, it comes with a healthy dose of punishment. Of course, the game still three and a half, nearly 4,000 gold in favor. Wildcats. You can see that uh, Bao is really trying to flex the muscles, trying to use the buffs, but he has oh. to be so careful. So let's take a look. That's a good equalizer. Bao goes up into the air and avoids the other half of the call of the Forge God. Targumas puts up the door, stays alive for now. The feathers come pulled back. Not too much more to be found. Second very nearly getting Ooh. a good. Shuffle onto someone at that point. He has himself that flash still and the phase rush to get away from that first play. It is much harder for Bao to take over the fights now that everyone has items. If he missteps once, that is one skill shot into probable death beyond that point. He doesn't have summoners, doesn't have ult. Syncroft is the one that's going forward. A Wildcats, they're losing control of this game still. Good, true shot barrage clips many members of the Wildcats. On the other side, Syncroft is in the wrong end of a flame spinner though. Destroy, desperately low, flashes over the wall, survives for now. Second can't quite get range besides each other though he does make it nice and close and this is the issue right the zone control is good from the wildcats but the range the engage from side of k corp pretty brutal to deal with and the right and power spikes are exactly that as well it's yeah. not like there is a huge difference in terms of items between the ad carries well i mean you could argue that even the ezreal has the bonus beyond that point it's just that the zaya has the enchanter but Bao has to do all of his own stunts the buffs get put onto him but he has to do all of the legwork it's not just gunning down a uh, tank in front of you that's been locked up. Bao is going to have a very hard time dishing out the damage that he needs to do for the Wildcats to retain a chance at staying in this tournament. Reminder again, you know, this is Cabochard. He's gone towards his very supportive build multiple times now. He's got the upgraded locket, uh, that reliquary of the Golden Dawn, if I remember the name correctly. Ooh, it's a good name. I'm pretty sure it's that one. But either way, you know, additional shielding to try and keep people alive. You've got the Even Shroud on the side of Synchrov as well. They are really trying to make sure that the poke, that the burst from Callist and Sacred mm. really does land hard. A reliquary is where you keep a relic, right? Yes. Yeah. Just had to check. I was yeah. like, that's a word I don't hear that often. But still. To get one in the Shivering. rift here from Cabochard. The thing is, Cabochard, it doesn't matter that he doesn't have 
that huge gold advantage. Destroy, yes, he has 3,000 gold. What's he using it for? Cabochard is using it to much more effect. He has the levels in his abilities and he's using his ult now. Oh my God, Cost has been eviscerated. He's street food again. Now to the back and Syncrop finds a three-man Keeper's Verdict. And the Verdict's looking like a three over in favor of Carbine Core. This blue wall's getting taller and taller. They're trying to do some damage on the Ferret who's healing up, but he's down. The locket comes on through and bow and destroy remain. Everyone else is dead to rights. Kamikoi, they think they can smell the blood in the water. What were they going for though? They decide not to go for a heavier push into the mid lane. They think that the wave clear is there. I think they'd be right. They're gonna head towards that Baron, but no smite, no mid laner, no engage from the limited amount they had. Wow. Wildcats, they are on the run. Wow, what are you thinking, mate? It's a 2v1, it's a lot of damage. So maybe I spoke too soon. Callist comes on over. Dragon would be alive. It would be Soul. So that is why he's there. They can't contest the Baron. They can maybe force people off the Baron. Saken's still pretty low. This could actually make this back and take a bit difficult afterwards. So Kupto's teleporting in right now to the mid lane. There need to be immediate recalls from Carmen Core in case Wildcats make a play with uneven numbers, but they're not in position to force a fight. And again, we've talked about how hard it is for the TCL champions to force themselves a fight. They are in absolutely dire straits, and it feels like even though you have scaling carries in the Azir and the Zaya, this is not a good game and a good draft for them to make the most out of this. Look at this. Bao is trying to do what Milio Zaya always does. Put on the buffs, run at the enemy, and see what you can do. Both of the carries recognize they have to do their own stunts, but the problem is there is always a risk. We're trying to backflip your way into the enemy team, and you leave yourselves open for counter engages like this. That three-man keeper's verdict was a thing of beauty, and Kofta, again, getting taken out before you can do anything resembling damage. It's pretty hard stuff. It's pretty rough stuff from the Wildcats. We've had questions about their draft three games in a row. Carmen Core have been very slick in how they've drafted and responded. It's feeling like this mid-game again is falling apart. It has gotten even worse as well. Soul in now for yeah. Carmen Core. Ocean Soul. They have themselves the frontline advantage yet again. Much like earlier in the series, that Ocean Soul is going to make it so much harder for their sea defenses to really overcome the might of the dragons against them. They have themselves the Baron buff to push in with as well. Carmen Core are well in control of this game called it mid-game, and I think that's probably a mistake. We're 30 minutes in, it's a soul, it's a second Baron. It's very truly late game. Look at those items. Look at how this game is going in Kami Core. Yes, the gold looks, and was for a long time, Wildcats favored, but once again, it's stalled Oof. and it's begun to descend down towards Kami Corp's side. Uh, well, I think Wildcats, they backed a little bit too. Oh, oh my destroy. word. Yeah, it's his namesake, all right, but it's only his own that's died. Kafta goes forward, but I think he's just sacrificing himself. Kalis, double kill on both. Both solo laners, it's practically two solo kills. It is all skill from the Azrael. Skill shots land. Bao trying to do something, oh, but it feels so hard. He tries desperately, but the shields just come down. There's nothing more to be done. And Seiko might like to start well finished, whereas AD carry started. Two members dead, a shove into mid lane. They've got a wave. How much fun can go? has teleport. He's going to try and end the series Paris? right here. Callist tries to land the true shot, but I can't quite find it. Paris back to the fountain. Where is Bao? He's having to recall in his own down base. They're finally back. They're on to the Nexus turret. Why no Nexus turret goes down? They're on to the Nexus itself. They have finally got Poppy, but Bao goes gold. They'll just get a seismic shove, and it's a seismic reaction across the whole of France. Carby Core 3-0, the defending champs. You know exactly what they're saying. It's a blue wall from Paris all the way to the finals. They want Montpellier. Oh, yes, this they do. This team, on their return to this tournament, are leaving nothing to chance. Yeah, bit of a rough group stage, but who cares? They walk away with a dominant quarterfinals against one of the pre-tournament favorites, against one of the out-of-group stage favorites. Carmen Core were well and truly the second seed coming out of group stage. They lost a game to Native, they lost two games to Matchgo, and they are forced for a tiebreaker to even get to this stage. But as long as they are in the tournament, you have to have just that little bit of a fear in the back of your mind because you know this team continually builds up over the course of this tournament. Semi-final secured now in 3-0 fashion. You can see exactly what's in their mind, exactly what's on their mind, and that is finals. That's a fourth championship. That is the continued undefeated streak of Amir Masters appearances where they have only ever won the damn tournament. That is why this team is so revered in this tournament. Yeah. That is why these players, this organization, has such a huge aura around them. They turn up when it matters, and yes, it got close this time around. Tiebreakers were required to get here, but they turn up, and it's not just any team they've 3-0'd, that's the Wildcats. And 
whenever Carmine Core are involved in an ERL game, you often talk about Carmine Core. You kind of have to. They have dominated the social presence of this era of play and this area of play. It really does feel like this team, they might not be the hero of everyone's stories. They are definitely not the hero of the Wildcats stories. They're not the hero of many LFL teams who they've beaten stories. But they, whether they are hero or villain, they are the focus. And you have to consider that, right? Because every time we've seen them at this tournament, they have ended up building time after time. And that's the big takeaway from me. I would, I did not view them as favorites coming in no, today. I think if you look back at the group stage games where they wouldn't, weren't very responsible with their leads, they weren't very clinical at closing out games, you had to view them like that, especially with the Wildcats being so good at telling out games. But that did not matter today. Congratulations to K-Pop. Didn't matter at all. The Carmine Core wave those blue flags oh so high. And to talk a little bit more about it, we have a desk that will break down this series. I think it'll be a lot of talk about blue walls, eh, guys? Absolutely. Thank you very much, Nishalaz and Aymera. And I have one question. How in the world does K Corp always make it work? And I'm not going to come to you to answer that question. I'm going to welcome Seiken, the victorious mid laner from K Corp, to answer that question for me. Hello, Seiken. Hello. Hello. Man, you've been there since the very beginning of KC. Congratulations, of course, of making semifinals again. How in the world Thank do you, you guys turn it into a Cinderella story from struggling in groups to now 3 0 in the former champions? Uh, I'm not sure. We are not that good in groups. Um, I think as, as well in scrims, we are not the best team. We are struggling a lot right now, but uh, when it matters, when we have official games to play, we just play together as one and it always go, goes well. So I'm really proud of the guys. I want to ask Saken, first and foremost, it's good to see you. It's been a while. Uh, 2019, when you subbed in for us and backed <laughs> us up, you know, it's, it's been a while. I, I see that you're doing well. How does it feel now with the change-up? It's crazy to see that there's so many bands flying your way, but you still manage to find the champion, which is kind of a shift up uh, in comparison to what was going on in the LFL. It seems like always EO Masters comes around and you find your form. Uh, how does it feel to have that attention in, in, in the draft? Um, I think I'm reaching always my best level when EO Masters come because I need to win this tournament. You know, I'm, I won it like three times, I need to win it more. So I will put myself like, uh, I put everything I have, you know, to, to be the best. And for the band, yeah, we are, we are used to, to see, we, we saw it in groups, you know, the band like LeBlanc and Azir like many times. So I have to find new picks, right? To new picks that are good into opponents right now. I think uh, Ari and Nico are really good uh, for the series. And uh, yeah, I need to find, I need to, to keep finding new picks, right? Like the band and Azir and, and, and LeBlanc, right? Uh, speaking of, oh sorry, do you want to go ahead? No, I just wanted to say it seems to be working. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, speaking <laughs> of finding new strategies, um, obviously you guys not having the best of time in groups. Are there new strategies that you guys are kind of trying to push forward now if you end up against Matchco in the future? Or are there anyone that you're particularly scared of in the future in facing this tournament now that you've just taken down the defending champions? Mm, in my eyes, I think uh, Wildcats were the, the best team by far, I think. So I'm really happy and relieved that we free of them, you know. So I think we'll just take, take it step by step. Um, playing, uh, play, we will play accordingly to opponents, like we did for today. I think our draft were really good into them. And uh, no, I'm not scared of uh, any teams, I think. Uh, for me, Wild Wildcats were the strongest team. So I think uh, if we work well and play the... Don't lose to draft this time, and we should be, we should be good. <laughs> no more Trindamir, no more leave GP open, maybe. <laughs> I, I, I want to ask, because that was the big change-up for me. It's like, I, I've worked with Cabo. I know that when Cabo's playing tanks, he gets involved in the game. He gets very, very busy. Uh, in terms of you guys coming together and playing more precise in the mid to late game and actually being five on the screen, uh, how did that development go? Was it Cabo just saying, yo, just put me on tank and I got it covered? Or, or, or what happened between the days between you guys playing, of course, the tiebreaker and then coming into this best of five? I think we, we just lost too much. Uh, I think in schemes, in, in official as well, we lost too much. So we were just uh, finding the way to, oh, how do we win, you know? And uh, we just went to the, to the basic stuff and uh, it, work, it works well. And I love Cabo on tanks, you know? He just gives me waves, <laughs> he's playing Cyan, he's doing a good job on it, so. It's good. I'm sure he's having a good time. <laughs> oh, of course, they can go into the series with Wildcats. We saw them win over in spring and we're like, yeah, they won, but they won an EMEA Masters with no K-Corp in it. We really want to see that matchup happen. It happened today and it looked extremely 
easy and comfortable from your side, guys. Did you expect that performance coming from Wildcats? Do you think they underperformed? Or is that exactly how you had it in mind? No, I think we had everything in mind. Uh, what their style, what do they want to play, you know? Uh, I think they want to play from top, what top and mid wanted to play. I think we, really, we knew what, what they wanted to do, you know? And we attacked, them, attacked this. So it was really, we, we were really well prepared, I think, for this series. And, um, and yeah, I'm really happy for the, that the guys, everyone did their job, you know, and uh, everything is perfect right now. It did really show your adaptation in draft was actually incredible. Now, of course, I want to ask you about a big dream scenario right here. The only team that was able to beat you twice in this Simia Master so far was Matchko in groups. Now, they do have a chance as they've advanced in semifinals to meet you potentially in finals at Montpellier. Is Matchko a team that you think are actually going to be as strong in best of fives as they were in best of ones against you? Mm, I'm not sure. I think uh, maybe maybe they, they, they are, you know. Uh, I think last EU Masters I played, uh, there was always a team that came from a bit like of nowhere, you know, they were underdogs and they, they made it to final. I can remember of like Nighty Rising in 2021. So maybe there are, are those guys. Uh, I hope I can find them in final and, and take my revenge this time. Yeah, we'll see if Matko can make it from the other side. As for this one, wish you good luck uh, in the semi-finals, Seiken. Your opponent is yet to be determined from the other quarterfinal. Congratulations on making it. And we'll see you in a couple of days in the semi-finals. Thank you. Thank you. What a story. Uh, what a glow up, I want to say, for Kaman Cobra. Coming in struggling, barely squeezing through for the quarterfinals from a tiebreaker to 3 all win. The DCL powerhouse? Crazy. What? <laughs> <laughs> this, this whole yeah. tournament has been crazy. I wonder if the other series is also going to be a 3-0. Because then we have four 3-0s <laughs> yeah. just happening just like that. Keiko 3 0 today. They had fantastic form. They figured out the recipe. Cabo on tanks. Saka said it himself. He loves it. I love it too. Honestly, what's there not to love? He doesn't love it in a team, right? When your top players <laughs> yeah. willing to play tanks and have 75% KP or something crazy. Of course, the other quarterfinal is still ongoing. 2 0 for SK Prime currently, but GO are fighting in game number three. And let's have a look of how the bracket has formed so far since that third quarterfinal is still playing. KCR are waiting for their opponents. On the other hand side, though, we do have Matsko versus Movistar, and they both 3 0 their series respectively. Yeah, I mean, it'd be incredible to see Magico take that. Obviously, the PG Nats fans finally getting their team into finals would be such an incredible story. But I mean, obviously, that Riders and no pushovers they had a fantastic series there yesterday. And I think that's where it's kind of looking to see like, OK, well, LFL has obviously been the new powerhouse, which you're looking at what was before the LFL dominance was the LVP dominance. And then you've you know, got PG Nats that are trying to come up as well. It feels like there's so many storylines that are being driven behind these teams to see if they can come back and kind of nab it for each of their home regions. It's also interesting now, I, I always after uh, after the group stage, it's so hard to gauge the exact strength of each region. And then you see like best of fives play out where uh, like we've had uh, movie star riders came as the second seed. Uh, they, they beat the first seed BKR out of their groups. They won, of course, the tiebreaker. And then you have uh, Keiko coming in as the second seed, also winning out. It also, it, it, you begin to imagine, like, what's, what was the actual strength of the groups that played out? And, uh, you know, are you in a situation where a 6-0 scoreline isn't as valuable as, you know, as it really seems to be in the moment as you go into the quarters because all of a sudden you see different matchups and then you begin to see different tendencies and you get to see matchups play out in, in, a, in a unique uh, fashion. I like what Alvaro said yesterday in the interview where he said that we've now scrimmed against everyone and I, I, it's always fun to see when these uh, tournaments uh, begin to mount up also at the World Championship and you get to see like these, these, these teams actually scrim against each other and you get this kind of melting pot of styles uh, where uh, an emerging meta then uh, becomes... Uh, the victor at the end of a tournament. But also then, as we just saw from Saken, like how to play against that as well. Like they said, hey, we knew what Kofta was going to play. We knew what Destroy was going to bring out. They were very well prepared for the Rumble. They were well prepared for the Jace. It does feel like it also gives you that opportunity to kind of read those tendencies as you were highlighting and then go, right, well, this is now the game plan. This is how we're going to beat them. And Carmine Corp showed it today. Like you can run over teams that are expected to be so strong. Of course, we need to say goodbye to the TCL powerhouse. Meant a lot to them. They played with fire. They got burnt this time around. This is what happens when you meet Casey at EMEA Masters. They either win it or don't qualify at all. They're three <laughs> peat, the, the winningest team in the tournament, if you will. And of course, there is an LVM support play of the day. Uh, if you would guess what it would be, would you put your money on Senna, maybe? 
It has to be, no? It has to be. <laughs> Uh, Can no. we even call it a super play? My man's, <laughs> yeah. my man's just sniping him. It was so <laughs> close. Look how close it is for this to turn into that danger zone and then buffering the auto that can't be cancelled. Super, super clean. I was even going to say, I don't know if I can just say a play. Like, it feels like an entire game for what Targum has had. He was absolutely insane. And again, like, the fact that you were able to bring out this Nila and also the center then to counteract it, what would be traditionally an incredibly strong bot lane for the Dennis Pank Wildcats is insane. And Targum has played it to perfection. I mean, Yamato, you were saying at the start of the day, he's always favored these more range supports. And you're getting to see when you give him a range support plus damage, turns out it's a fairly decent combination. Who would have seen it coming? Yeah, just a quick reminder right here. Targum must finish this game uh, with 17,000 damage ahead of any one of his teammates. So very well deserved. Uh, deserved? Deserved? I think I'm hungry at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about being hungry, we're hungry for some semifinals. Now, we're going to be signing off over here, but the third quarterfinal is still ongoing. So if you want to catch that one between SK Prime and Team Geo, it's still ongoing on twitch.tv slash ESLOL. So head over there towards the third quarterfinal. As for us, we'll see you guys again this week on Thursday, where Matchko is going to be taking on Movistar Riders. Thank you very much for joining me, guys. And we'll see you on Thursday. Catch you on the flippity flip. Woo! <laughs>